Peloton versus Sunny Bike. Which is the better buy? I just couldn't help myself anymore. Today we're gonna compare the $369 bike you can buy on Amazon.com, which is my cheapest bike of any of these bikes, versus the most expensive bike that I have, the Peloton Bike Plus, which costs $2,495. Based on all my research, the Peloton bike has a 38 pound flywheel and the Sunny bike has a 49 pound flywheel. Each of these bikes are belt driven. The Sunny bike has a resistance knob up here on the top and so does the Peloton bike. However, on the Peloton bike, the resistance is controlled through a digital motor and it is magnetic resistance. And over here on the Sunny Bike, there is a leather pad that is controlled by a physical resistance knob to give you physical resistance on this bike. This is the Sunny Model B1002 that I bought on Amazon. However, Sunny does make magnetic resistance bikes. I just wanted to try out a physical resistance knob and see how that compares to all of these magnetic resistance bikes I have. So why would you go out and spend $2,495 on the Peloton Bike Plus if you could just go on over to Amazon and buy the Sunny Model B1002 for $369 and save yourself over $2,000 just not buying that bike and getting this one. So yeah, the Peloton Bike does have magnetic resistance and it also has this gigantic rotating screen that you can do uh, classes on the bike as well as off the bike. While the Sunny Bike over here doesn't come with any screen at all and this little phone holder thing is an accessory that I put on there myself. After all, if you did buy the Sunny Bike for $369, you'd have over $2,000. You could go out and buy yourself a giant television, some new speakers and a receiver, all of which would probably be a better quality than what you get on this little tablet on front of the Peloton. Sure, you get the Peloton classes on your Peloton tablet on the bike here, but not only do you have to pay over $2,000 for the Peloton bike, you also have to pay $39 per month for the membership. So why not just buy the Sunny Bike and join the Peloton digital app for $13 per month and stream it straight onto your television. I'm not saying that I have the answer to this question or that this comparison necessarily even really makes sense, but I thought I'd just have a little bit of fun with it today and show some of the comparisons and differences between these two bikes. And if you're in the market for a Peloton alternative, maybe the Sunny Bike is something you'd be interested in. If you're enjoying this video, please give me a thumbs up and any questions or comments you have, leave down below the video in the comment section. So like I said, I bought this Sunny Bike on Amazon for $369 and I do have a link to it below the video in the description box. I really do like this Sunny Bike. This flywheel is massive. It is the heaviest flywheel out of any of these bikes, including the Peloton Bike Plus, and it really just has a massive amount of inertia. However, you know, this bike does not come without its drawbacks. It's not perfect. This resistance pad up here, I do like the retro look of it. And this bike just kind of has a different feel to it than all the other bikes I have here. Um, I do like this bike. I will say, and I'll show you in a moment, that this uh, physical resistance pad here does have its drawbacks. It makes a little bit of noise. And the physical resistance pad is not quite as smooth of a drivetrain feel as the magnetic drivetrains. The drivetrain on the Peloton Bike Plus is very smooth and it's pretty quiet, but it is not silent and I'll show you how that sounds in just a moment. So one advantage the Peloton Bike Plus has over the Sunny Bike and pretty much any of these other DIY Peloton Bike alternatives is convenience. You know, the the tablet is right here. It's so easy just to hop on this bike and just pull up your menu, menu, select your profile and start a ride just so easily. And you get all your metrics and everything like right away up on the screen. And one thing that you do get on the Peloton bike or bike plus, regardless of which one you get, you get the leaderboard. You do not get the leaderboard on the Peloton digital app. So if you're doing a Peloton alternative bike for the Peloton digital uh, app services, you will not get that leaderboard. And the leaderboard is really important to some people while other people, they simply do not care about the leaderboard. So ask yourself that question. Do you want a leaderboard or not? Additionally, right here on the screen of the Peloton Bike Plus, you get your cadence as well as your power output and watts, 
as well as your resistance level. And a lot of the classes have automatic adjusting resistance and the auto follow feature, which is right there. Additionally, there are tons of other graphs and metrics that you can look at after the ride is over. Over here on the Sunny Bike, you do not get any of that stuff. You do not get your resistance output metrics. You do not get cadence output metrics, anything. However, what a lot of people tend to do on the Sunny Bike is install a Wahoo cadence sensor right onto the crank arm there. And then in that case, you can get your cadence back using the app. However, since this particular Sunny Bike is a physical resistance knob and a physical pad there on the flywheel, there really is no way to get your resistance metrics output on this bike. However, I should mention, and I will put a link below the video in the description box, Sunny does sell magnetic resistance flywheel bikes that do give you the output metrics. So um, I really do like the build quality of the Sunny and I am thinking about getting another Sunny bike that does have magnetic resistance to review because uh, this bike is a solid build and I really do like it. On this particular Sunny bike, this bike comes with cage style pedals. They're not too shabby really, you know, they're not my favorite. The platform could be a little bit bigger, but you know, they're pretty solid overall and they do have the cage style option there. So this pedal style setup is really good for somebody who's a casual rider and just getting started with indoor cycling and isn't really like super serious about clipping in and taking it to the next level yet. The Peloton Bike Plus comes stock with these clip-in style pedals, which we actually took off, and I'll tell you why in a moment. These style pedals are designed to clip in to the Peloton shoes or any shoes that have this style clip-in on the bottom. However, one of the reasons we stopped using these is because uh, you really can't walk on these. So, you know, if you want to do an on-bike workout and also off-bike workout where you're lifting weights and stuff, if you get off your bike, you really just can't walk around in these shoes and it's kind of annoying to take them off and start your next workout. Another thing about these Peloton shoes is a lot of people have a very difficult time getting out of the clip-in pedals. And one more reason we decided to take these Peloton pedals off is because we have seen horror stories about these things literally snapping off during a ride and causing uh, significant cuts and injuries to some people. Anyway, all I did is take my trusty old Shimano SPD style clip-in pedals and put them on the Peloton Bike Plus because this is my uh, trusted pedal I've been using for seven years now. And in addition, you can get these uh, more casual style shoes that have a SPD clip-in on the bottom. And the benefit of these style shoes is you can actually walk around on these shoes. So, you know, if you wanna do a workout on the bike and also off of the bike, you can basically just unclip easily because the SPDs unclip very easily. And then you can just transition straight into, you know, a weightlifting session when you get off the bike. And since pedals is one of the biggest questions I get, uh, I have a link to these in the description box below this video. And of course, these SPD pedals go on to any of these bikes I have here. It is a standard thread that you can put the pedals on any of these bikes. So all these details aside, you know, how do the bikes ride? How does it feel to ride on this Sunny bike compared to the uh, very expensive Peloton Bike Plus? I'm about to hop on both these bikes and give you my thoughts and opinions here and share with you what they sound like and what that physical resistance pad uh, feels like compared to the magnetic resistance on the Peloton Bike Plus. Right off the bat, I can tell you that uh, changing the resistance on the Peloton Bike Plus is extremely snappy. All you gotta do is flick that uh, resistance knob and it will adjust for you very quickly. The resistance knob on the Sunny Bike, you know, you gotta crank it and it takes some time and effort to get to where you wanna go. Additionally, since that is a physical pad on this Sunny Bike, there is wear and tear on it, so eventually you will have to replace it and also there is a small amount of maintenance you do need to do to keep this thing in working order. Here's what the seat looks like on the Sunny Bike. I do believe this is like one of the best seats that comes on a inexpensive, I will say inexpensive and not cheap because the Sunny Bike I would not consider to be like cheap, you know what I mean? Uh, this is a solid build quality and I do like the seat that comes on the Sunny Bike. There's this nice little cutout in there and there's nice shaping to it and it's just a nice seat. The Peloton Bike Plus also comes with a very nice seat. Uh, no complaints on either of these seats. While we're up here, take a quick look at the handlebars on the Sunny Bike. I do like these handlebars a lot. They're thick, they feel nice, nice uh, rubber padding. Uh, there's multiple hand positions. There's a close one, a far one that's also flat, and then you get your side ones, and they, the ends flare up as well. 
And then you kind of get this little uh, upside down U-shape kind of deal going on up here, which uh, I'm not really sure why they chose that design, but you know, whatever. One comment I have received about this Sunny Bike is some people talk about uh, potential rust forming on these bolts right here if you don't clean them up from your sweat dripping on them. So uh, check that out and be aware of that. The Sunny Bike is actually a great option for tall people. I'm six foot five and I'll show you what it looks like here in a moment, but this seat can actually go up really high. One downside is the holes are spaced kind of far apart for clicking into. So you're not really gonna get like a super perfect fit in terms of like where you get that seat height at uh, for uh, moving it up and down. However, the, the back of the seat does slide forwards and backwards. There are holes you need to click into for moving the seat forwards and backwards. Um, however, you know, if you can't get it exactly where you want, you can always slide the seat along these rails. So, uh, you know, it's, it's fine. Up here on the front, you do get these holes that you have to click into that are a little bit far spaced apart in comparison to some of the more expensive bikes. One other thing I'd like to comment on is the quality of the knobs and adjustments on the Sunny Bike. They are actually very nice in comparison to a lot of these other inexpensive bikes. However, they are definitely not as nice of a feel as the rubberized uh, touch of the Peloton Bike Plus. And speaking of over here on the Peloton Bike Plus, you do not have to click into a hole for moving the handlebars up and down, as well as for moving the seat up and down back there in the back. There are no holes you click into, so you get infinite micro adjustments for moving the seats and the handlebars up and down. One downside of both of these bikes is there is no forwards and backwards adjustability for either of these bikes, whereas there are two bikes back there that do have that option. So I'm about to hop on both these bikes head to head and compare the drivetrain feel and max resistance and I'll show you that sort of stuff. But before we do that, let's just take a quick look at the physical appearance of both the bikes, starting with the Sunny. I really like the look of the Sunny bike, honestly. It's got that nice like chrome retro looking uh, metal to it on the, the seat post and the stem and the flywheel I think just looks beautiful. And that retro Sunny font down there, Sunny bike. I just really like the look of it. However, the beauty of the Peloton Bike Plus cannot be argued. This is a very good looking bike, just a flat matte looking black, black flywheel, uh, subtle red accents, very, very good looking bike. Oh, and as comparison over here on the Peloton Bike Plus, these are the hand positions you get on the bike over here. I really like the handlebars on this bike. They're a little bit thicker, I think. You get that flat uh, bar across here, and you also get another flat option up here, and then these inward uh, sloped grips, these side grips, and these upper grips. These are some very nice handlebars on the Peloton Bike Plus. And you also get dual water bottle holders right up here. The Sunny Bike only has one water bottle holder, and oddly enough, it's positioned up here on the front right of the fork, whereas most of the time, what you see on these bikes is it's just right there on the top tube. And um, I actually really kind of like what they did there because a lot of times when you put that water bottle right here in the center, uh, it kind of tends to just get in the way of the resistance knob. But let's get into the meat of the drivetrains now. This Sunny Bike comes with a massive 49 pound flywheel. And this is one of the things that really intrigued me about this Sunny Bike when I first bought it. This flywheel is much more massive and heavy than any of these other flywheels, including the Peloton Bike Plus, which Based on my research, anything, everything that I could find about the Peloton Bike Plus says that this flywheel on the Peloton Bike is 38 pounds, or as 49 pounds on the Sunny Bike. So one of the common points of discussion in terms of getting an indoor cycling bike is flywheel weight or flywheel mass. Is bigger always better? That is a good question. And uh, really, you know, what it comes down to is inertia. You know, just the mass is kind of going to affect the drivetrain feel. And I'm gonna do my best to explain and describe the differences that I can feel between this drivetrain versus the Peloton Bike Plus drivetrain. So let's do that now. So getting on the Sunny Bike, one of the first things I wanna point out is this bike is really good. It's a great option for tall people. Right now I have the seat on the maximum height just for demonstration. I'm six foot five. Generally my pants have an inseam of 34 inches and like a pair of jeans, for example and my leg is fully extended. This, this seat on maximum height is the only bike out of all of these bikes back here that I can actually extend the seat up to a position that's too tall for me. So right now the seat height is on nine. I actually prefer to ride this one on seven, which is 
considerably lower. It's like a full like two inches lower. Okay, so now the seat height is on seven, and this is about like where I like my knee bend to be at the bottom of the pedal stroke. The handlebars are on the maximum height, and you know, this is fine. Like this is a comfortable riding position. Um, you know, I like the feel of the Sunny. So let me just kind of uh, start pedaling the Sunny 49 pound massive flywheel and just kind of share my thoughts and experience with what that's like. So like I've said a few times, this flywheel is very heavy. So the inertia of it is kind of hard to get it started. And like once it starts getting going, it really just carries a lot of momentum. So it's like hard to like slow it down as well. So like if you do like a lot of hard power transfers while riding the bike, uh, this bike will help you maintain a steady cadence while riding. So at resistance of zero, AKA the leather pad is not touching the flywheel, um, you can kind of hear like a small amount of noise. Just take a listen. And once you get that, <laughs> like I was saying, once you get that flywheel cranked up, it just really carries a lot of inertia, a lot of momentum. So it kind of just like starts pulling your feet through. When you try to slow down, it doesn't like really let you slow it down very easily. <sighs> so if you're a powerful person, you're a bigger person, you can put down a lot of power. Uh, you'll probably have a lot of fun with this flywheel. So let me start cranking out a little bit of resistance so you can hear what that sounds like and I'll tell you what it feels like. So I think that one area that this really massive flywheel comes in handy is because it's a physical resistance pad, it really just kind of helps the, the bike, it helps the flywheel like carry that momentum through uh, when the physical resistance pad is on it. One thing about this Sunny bike is like, once you start getting the resistance to come on, um, within like w one turn or two turns, it starts to make like a really significant difference. So like one turn of the resistance knob really makes a giant leap in resistance. And like, I mean, basically like four turns and you're like at maximum resistance on any of these other bikes back here. So like right now I'd say this is probably like Peloton resistance of like 60. But one of the great things about the Sunny bike here with the physical resistance pad is this bike has a higher max resistance than the Peloton bike. So if you're a really powerful person or really strong, or you have a lot of weight to throw around, this Sunny bike will be able to handle it. So as a tall person, one of the first things I can notice is the Peloton Bike Plus allows me to get into a slightly more comfortable riding position where I can get my body in a more upright position. I do not have the seat on the maximum height for this bike, just like I didn't on that bike. So this bike does fit really tall people uh, very well, just like the Sunny bike does. However, I will say that the uh, Peloton Bike Plus will give taller riders a um, better opportunity to get in a more comfortable riding position, as well as you can always drop down these uh, handlebars and get in a more aggressive riding position too, if you would like to. So right now I'm kind of just riding along. Uh, right away, you know, I get my cadence output. I'm at cadence 90, watts output is 20, resistance is zero. So yes, the Peloton Bike Plus is magnetic resistance, but that does not mean it's completely silent. So listen to the sound of the drivetrain. And the Peloton Bike Plus, as you would expect, is a very smooth feeling drivetrain. Let me add on a little bit of resistance here. 
crank it up to 32. Cadence 110, output 110, resistance 32%. And <laughs> the resistance on the Peloton Bike Plus changes very quickly. You just flick that resistance knob and you are there to the next resistance uh, level very, very quickly. So this is 56% resistance and cadence is 52, output 120. This already feels like pretty heavy resistance. Now I'm at resistance 74, cadence is 45, 50, output 200. So honestly, Peloton Bike Plus has I, I consider the Peloton Bike Plus the gold standard for max resistance. Even though you can crank up the Sunny Bike max resistance higher, um, this one, the magnetic resistance on the Peloton Bike Plus just feels smoother. Now I'm at resistance 100%. Cadence is 37, 40. Output is measured at 300 watts right now. I weigh 190 pounds, I'm six foot five. This is extremely difficult resistance, like climbing straight up a hill, uh, pulling a trailer too. But not only is the max resistance high on the Peloton Bike Plus, it also feels smooth because the magnets, you know, there's no physical pad there. Um, it just feels different and it feels better. Hopping straight on back over here to the Sunny Bike V1002. Um, you crank that resistance up to about, oh, I don't know, here? There's no feedback. Um, this feels like about resistance of 100 on the Peloton Bike Plus. I mean, this feels pretty nice though, honestly. But it's just different. There's like a physical pad. Um, there's just like a slight different feel to it. And obviously there's a different noise. Okay, so I'm out of breath right now. What better time to just sit down here and share some of my thoughts. Um, if you're tall or you want a really high max resistance and a low price, the Sony Model B1002, good option. Like I said, I do have a link to the Sunny Bike below this video in the description box. And if you do want to buy this bike, um, it will help support this channel if you buy it through the link below this video. I'm not trying to convince you to buy the Sunny Bike. I'm just saying if you're gonna buy it, and if you do buy it through the link in the description box, that does help support this channel and I would appreciate it. Let me leave you with my final thoughts on the Sunny Bike Model 1002 versus the Peloton Bike Plus. But first, if you found any value in this video, please give me a thumbs up and any questions or comments, please leave down in the comment section below. So yeah, obviously massive, massive price difference. You know, if you're new to indoor cycling and you're a taller person or you have a lot of power you can put down and you want a high max resistance, the Sunny bike here in this video, the B1002, is a great option for um, the seat height and adjustability for tall people and maximum resistance. Also, the flywheel on this bike is very heavy, 49 pounds. So. It's a little bit, it's hard to get it going relative to some of these other flywheels back here, um, but it also really carries that inertia a lot more once you get it going. So the Sunny Bike drivetrain on this model is quite a bit different of a feel compared to a lot of the other bikes back there that I do have reviews on. So if you wanna see other reviews on other bikes and comparison videos, I have a lot more of those. I think the Sunny Bike is a really good value and I feel like the Sunny Bike is built very well. Like the build quality, my initial quality impressions, although I have not done a tail heavy score on this bike yet, which is coming soon, um, but I feel like this is a very well built bike compared to a lot of the other inexpensive bikes. I would not call this a cheap bike. I would call the Sunny Bike an inexpensive bike. Obviously, you know, the Peloton Bike Plus. If you can afford it, if you got that extra cash laying around and you don't mind $39 per month monthly fee, uh, the Peloton Bike Plus is a beautiful piece of machinery, very high quality, 
bike. Uh, it's my favorite bike. I do like the Peloton bike the best. However, you know, that price point is a big deal. In terms of style, the Sunny bike, I really like the style of it. You know, the retro uh, chrome look to it, the leather pad, the physical resistance knob, just, you know, everything about it. The font, the Sunny bike font there on the side, the Sunny on the, the, the tube there. Uh, you know, it's just a nice looking bike. I like it. Obviously, same goes for the Peloton. Uh, it has much more of a sinister, ominous look to it and it is a beautiful bike as well. If you want to do the Peloton classes and you want the leaderboard, you must get a Peloton bike, whether it's the bike or the bike plus, but you do need to pay that $39 per month in order to get that leaderboard. And you know, the Peloton bike is very, very convenient just to hop on and go, you know? The, the bike plus has that gym kit feature so you can hook up your uh, Apple watch and get your metrics for your heart rate and all your cadence and everything resistance, automatic adjusting resistance. You know, this is the BMW over here. Over here, I don't know what you call it, maybe the Toyota. Uh, so, you know, wh which do you want? You know, you just have to decide how you want to spend that money. Even though you don't get your metrics on the Sunny, you can get the Wahoo Cadence sensor. Throw that on the crank arm, get your feedback for cadence, which is probably the most important metric for uh, indoor cycling classes and tracking your metrics and stats. And then, you know, you can get something like the Skosh uh, Rhythm Plus heart rate monitor is what we have here. I do have a review on this if you're interested in that. And you know, you can uh, build this thing out and kind of customize it and uh, make it to your liking. You know, you can find a way to get your own uh, tablet mounted up here. Even though there is no tablet mounting uh, device here, there are aftermarket stuff for that as well. Maybe I could throw some links down there for you. I've seen some pretty neat stuff with this. And like I said before, you could just set up the Sunny Bike in front of a massive TV, your own stereo system, kind of get your own custom thing going on. So, you know, if customization is your thing, you know, you could swap out those pedals on the Sunny Bike, throw on the same exact pedals that I have on the uh, Peloton Bike Plus right now, just some standard Shimano SPD pedals. And you know, you can really just kind of build it out and customize it to your own personal liking. So, you know, if you're not ready to dive in the deep end, drop thousands and thousands of dollars and commit to, you know, something uh, more, more of a, a bigger financial commitment like the Peloton Bike Plus, there are other options available on amazon.com. So guys, Matt here with How Happy TV. Thanks for watching. Give me a like, leave a comment, links below this video. That's all I have for you today. Be sure to subscribe and I'll see you in my next video.